This is the story of a story that one year ago was still waiting to be written. Which means you shouldn't even be here right now. <laughs> There's a moment you've been waiting all your life for When you find the very reason you're alive for And it happens when you seem to least expect it All at once you come alive and feel connected I ignore the beat inside my Brilliant! 
unfortunately for you, I can afford to lose a fortune. Can you? No, I can't. <laughs> Mrs. Barry, 
I'm afraid there's no sign of Mr. Marriott and your carriage Southside. Really, that man has no sense of time. Right, I might be back later than expected. These dinners are the reform club do tend to go on. And make sure my dress is ready for the National Gallery unveiling in the morning. Oh, be sure and take it out a little around the chest as discussed. I don't know how you fit it all in, Mrs. Berry. <laughs> Excuse me? The schedule, I mean. <laughs> in the park and it became a little disorientating. Porthos, there you are, boy. Come here. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh. James, what did I tell you? Did you? James, that dog should be tied up in the yard. Albert. Oh, I'm sorry not to take you to the park today. I'm sorry. A mother and her four, <clears throat> and her four boys, they were playing a game, trying to get me to join in. Well, that sounds terribly distracting. Who was she? Oh, uh, Sylvia, I believe. Sylvia Davies. Are you Ellen Davies? Yes. Oh, yes, what did I hear? Oh, yes, her husband. He died. Quite from the young, something awful. Cancer of the jaw, I think. Still, they say she's very pretty. Oh, and isn't her mother Mrs. Du Maurier? She knows practically everyone worth knowing. We should invite them to dinner. Well, you could extend the invitation yourself. If you join me tomorrow, we could uh, go for a walk together. What a mock about in the park. James, I have appointments to keep in, and you have a play to finish. You need to just hand it in to Charles. Well, Mary, the thing is, I, I just think it's rubbish. James! Yes. <laughs> Have you a sign of the pumps 
Yes, my darling. What is that still up in the air? <laughs> that, 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 that's pretty much exactly where it is. <laughs> uh, well, so here's the thing. Uh, it's not quite a. Well, the, the, the pages that you saw that, that I was just finishing. Oh, yes. <laughs> but I, I threw them away. <laughs>
now it is just an illusion, confusion in this. You're someone who believes. Do you look? Tell me what do you see?
sure. I shall be most intrigued to meet Mr. Barry. I understand he's become playmates with my grandchildren these past weeks. He's been seen joining in with their games in Kensington Gardens. I confess I was a little surprised at such a public place, given, as I'm sure you're aware, my daughter's circumstances. Nevertheless, we shall see for ourselves, as I gather you have invited the boys this evening. Another nice surprise. Yes. <laughs> to tell the truth, it was a surprise for me, too. I really had no idea that children flattered to James in any way. But still, I can only apologize that my daughter is late. A not unusual occurrence, I'm afraid. Oh, I know how you feel. James's pocket watch must have developed rust through lack of use. The only thing he ever seems to wind up is me. Oh, Mrs. De Maurier, <laughs> such a pleasure to meet you at last. We are great admirers of the work you do with charities and the arts. Mr. Barry, thank you for the invitation, most kind. Leaving off? Oh, Charles! Great. Ravishing as always. <laughs> Charles, allow me the honor. Yes, yes we are see. already acquainted, Mr. Froman. Of course I know, Mrs. De Maurier. Well, allow me to introduce you. Always a pleasure to see a fellow board member, Lord Cannell. Quiet, yes. Charles invited me along as I'm considering an investment in the new play. Uh, tell me, Mr. Barry, how is it going? Oh, well, uh, uh, the, the, the place, uh... <laughs> His mind must be temporarily switched off from working so productively earlier today. <laughs> the least you can do is try to lie convincingly. Lovely to see you again, Mary. Now, listen to James. I need you to make sure this mic goes extra specially smoothly so the blood can is extra interesting. Listen, Mary! Oh, my God! Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. No, no, they're touching my writing. Charles will ask the homeless. Good evening, Mother. Sorry we're late. Mr. Barry had his saving down the Amazon this afternoon until he was bitten by a horse. Oh, this pity play. Oh, it's horrible. He blew up the sign for a hippopotamus. Really? You don't say it. Mrs. Barry, may I present my daughter, Sylvia Llewellyn Davies? Such a pleasure to meet you. Gosh, you're so elegant. Mm. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> James has told me all about you. Now let's see. George, Jack, Peter, and Michael. Have I got that right? Nice try, but no. I'm Jack. He's Peter. Jack, please, if we want to make a good impression. Sylvia, so you don't mind a, a gift for Peter? Oh, you, you shouldn't have. That's only a little thing. Here. Well, if it's a gift for Peter, you should give it to him yourself. Peter, go on, be brave. <laughs> All the writer needs is a good leather binding and a fantastic title. The Terrible Adventures of the Brothers Davies, faithfully set forth by Peter Llewellyn Davies. I, I'm not your writer. Of course you are. Write about your family, about your friends, about the talking whale. What whale? The whale inside your head screaming to get out. Oh, <laughs> Emily, really? Oh, oh, oh. Me, I suspect the gentleman has been riding recently. Yes, I had a jolly nice trot around Windsor Park this morning. Quite lovely. But what business is that of yours? If only to have a allergic to horse hair, sir. Watch out! You have no business being allergic to anything, Emily, not when we have guests. <laughs> Most extraordinary. I don't think I've heard my servants' voices in months. The way it should be, you know. Like this chap, as good as invisible. There, we need him. Born when you do. That's quite a piece. Ladies and gentlemen, dinner is set. Do that. 
this, and this, and this. Look at this. James! Oh, look, Michael! It's so shiny you can rise the light off it. See there? Please don't do that, young man. Peter! I'm terribly sorry. The boys aren't used to a proper dinner at the table. Mother, perhaps if my daughter let me help out a little more, there would be more... Actually, Peter isn't doing anything wrong. For you see that light bouncing around the room is, in fact, a fairy. Is it so? Yes. She must have flown in and got trapped by mistake. Gentlemen, my pocket where should be safe. Please, <laughs> artists, hey, Lord Kenneth. Please forgive my husband. He's working on the new play. That's fantastically hard. Yes, and he's looking for inspiration anywhere he can, even at the dinner table. Right. Has anyone read the latest Conan Doyle? Yes, I do think so. I think great. I will sit up straight. He's tired. That's all. Come no more toil. I prefer Dickens to Conan Doyle. Mary, it's a skill this fine soiree. Oh, that's kind of you to say. You know I'd be the prince if you came with Crowcat. For goodness. To silence the inane chatter of this insufferable part. Not, not you boys, of course. Or you, Sylvia. Muster, I was born with a silver spoon in my mouth and I can't get it out. Here, have some peas, your lordship. <laughs>
that we would get through this together. Yes? I should go. No, James, please don't go. Not because of that. Please stay. All right, let's go, boys. skating on a nearby pond and there was an accident. I always felt I should have been there. I'm so sorry. David was my mother's favorite. No, I knew it. <laughs> when he died, she didn't get out of bed for months. One day I went into her room dressed up in David's clothes. And she cried. Tears of happiness. All she wanted to see was my brother again. Here. What's this? It's the thimble for your finger. When sewing, it protects you from pain. They want to never land. Never land. A place. <coughs> i 
James. Don't insult me by staying silent. I have nothing to say. That's not true. You have plenty to say. Just not to me. You don't have to read my journal to get to know me, Mary. Do you love her? How can you ask me that? I'm free as I myself to spend it all my life to be all the things one expects from a wife. In an imagination is where you reside. The I was foolish, reckless and blind. 
Kiss up. Excuse me, I said kiss her, dammit. I do not need you to prod me. This is your moment. Take the plan. I have everything in hand. Thank you very much. If you don't kiss her, I will. Go away. Showing my 
face in the swamp. Uh, Mr. Barry Swanson left him here. Mm. Can you blame her? He's clearly a king. Who are his in the fall of the Roman Empire? Good night, Charles. Yes, indeed. Let's all drink to that. <laughs> Do they say cheers where you're from, Charles? <laughs> <laughs>
just have to do everything the producer says. <laughs> You're the stage manager and, uh, Michael, oh, you can be the usher. What about Peter? You nickel poop, Jack. He's just the writer. I'm not a writer, not really. Yes, you are. I mean, you wrote this, didn't you? Well, I suppose, but... But nothing. What does Mr. Barry always tell us? You can be anything you wanna be. You can go anywhere you wanna see. A little hard work and you can do it. Faith will get you through it. So many possibilities. You gotta believe it, see it, and you can be it. The answers are all inside yourself. The universe has plenty of space and a gift that it gave to the whole human race. Is that Yeah. <laughs> 
No, Michael, it's the game. Your, your mother will be fine. Uh, let's, uh, let's go inside, all right? Leave us for a moment. It's good boys.
not you without mother. Sorry, Mr. Barry. Very well. Neither am I. I'd rather stay here with you all. Much more fun. Really? So? Seriously, you boys, however grown up I think you are, in the sense of woman, to tell you how things are. Now, Mr. Barry must go to his play. And I insist one of you accompany him. After all, I require a full report. <coughs> now, which one of you is going? Peter. No, wait, Dr. Mm -hmm. Chagall. Look at his jacket. Look at his shoes. Look at his ticket. <laughs> Come on in, everyone! 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 Come on in, everyone!
Mr. De Maurier, but James felt he couldn't properly open the play anywhere but here. But you've already had your opening night. Well, that was just our dress rehearsal. <laughs> and it went well by all the colors. <laughs> This, this is the real opening night with the family who inspired it all. Well, it's Peter's play, The Boy Who Wounds Grow Up. That isn't me. No, that's him. He's Peter Pan. He just has my name, and it's the best present any boy was ever given anywhere in the world. All right, everyone, let's get, let's get ready. Charles, I have to say. There would be no Peter Pan without Charles Brown. James. All right, I did say right from the beginning it was going to work. <laughs> All right, let's go. Act one, scene one. The nursery. Yeah. It's the darling house. Oh, and look, Steve. Preparing the beds is Nana. The family talk. Because the darling and didn't care. Oh, Peter. I won't get a bed! I won't! I won't! I say! No, no, it isn't six o'clock yet. Two minutes more, please. Oh, One minute more, please. Oh, is that my other study? <laughs> Peter, you are going to be the darling house. Oh, Peter, the most amazing voice.
did say this wasn't going to be easy. <laughs> Thank you. Life was amazing. 